Right, well, welcome to the uh, National Society review for August. More details can be found on the website, details on the screen. So looking at the whole sky map for the month, um, this is around about 10 o'clock mid-month. Um, and we, we can still see in the south, we've got uh, Sagittarius, probably the best time to have a look at it now, um, slightly darker skies. Um, it's due south about 10 o'clock. Um, lots of nice things to look at with binoculars in that area. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, overhead, we've got the Summer Triangle from, from Deneb, Bega and uh, Altair there. Um, and the usual sort of uh, pointers to various things in the sky. We have uh, to the east, we have a square of Pegasus, which is rising nicely now. That's a good signpost constellation, a uh, good signpost asterism to, to find things with. So. Looking round to the west, we see Virgo is heading towards the sunset twilight area. And so um, this is a bit of interest with Comet uh, Neowise heading that way as well. The bright star Arcturus is visible, it's an orange colored star, can't miss it. You just follow the, the handle of the plow around here and it points to Arcturus, um, very easy to find and a uh, useful signpost for finding the comet uh, the first part of the month. Obviously using the, the handle, uh, the, the plow again, we can use the pointers here and use them the other way. We find Polaris and North Pole Star. In the north, we've still got uh, Capella, very low down in the north. That's quite a bright star, you can easily find that. And we've got the usual sort of constellations, which are useful things to find. The W of Cassiopeia here. Um, which is very useful as a pointer to finding um, Andromeda, which is over here, the galaxy M31, and also the double cluster, which is pointing the other way, which is in this area here. So we've got two bright planets at the moment in the south, Jupiter and, and Saturn. Jupiter is by far the brighter. Um, nicely placed due south, uh, but very low down. So have a look at those if you can. If we go into the south in more detail, this is about 10 o'clock again, mid-month. Um, a bit more detail, you can see there's some nice objects we can find. There are quite a few objects in Sagittarius around here. Um, moving up through the Milky Way, M11, the Wild Duck Cluster, and moving up towards Altair here. Um, and then you get an interesting area formed in the Summer Triangle over here with some more details of that later. To the, into the west. This is where most of the interest will be the uh, first part of the month. Um, most of you hopefully would have seen the comet by now. Um, and so uh, as we approach mid-month, the comet is getting lower and lower in our evening sky. It's fading um, and it's heading towards Virgo uh, in this area here. We're just setting earlier and earlier each evening. So the best time to see the comet is really first week or two of the month really um, some more details coming up in a minute so we've got some signpost constellations over here hercules which is this constellation here very useful asterism formed by the, the keystone here um, and an easy find is m13 one of jonathan's challenges with binocular challenge a little bit harder to find is m92 up there but some very nice uh, globular clusters around this time of the year Go on to looking into the north. Um, I say we've got Capella low down. I also look into the northeast. We've now got the autumn constellations coming into vogue, as it were. Um, this is Perseus. Um, easy to spot. Great letter pi, if you like, the top of the pi here. The two legs coming down here and here. Um, interesting star, Algol, is the, the demon star, which is a variable star, naked eye variable star. Some more information on that uh, if you want it. Um, so there we are, looking into the north, going to the east. Again, this is probably a good direction to uh, be familiar with. Um, we've got um, by 11, 11 o'clock mid month, whoops, 11 o'clock mid month, we have um, uh, Mars actually making an appearance for the first time in our evening sky. Mars will become very prominent over the next month or two or three. Um, so if you haven't seen Mars yet, this is the first time you get to see it this season. Um, have a look in the east low about 11 o'clock mid-month. Um, we've also got 
uh, let's say the square of Pegasus, which is a useful signpost constellation to find two other things. One extending down here is Neptune over here. And the other way, we point it around the other way, we're finding Uranus down here. Um, we also have um, the radiant for the per Perseid meteor shower just in, in this area here between Cassiopeia and Perseus. Um, this year, the peak is on the 12th of August. Um, there is a newsletter, you'll be lucky to hear, is a newsletter of 251, which will be published shortly. Um, details of Mars is published in the newsletter 252, uh, Uranus in 253 and Neptune in 254. So you'll have four new, or five actually new uh, newsletters coming your way very soon. <laughs> So comet, it's been very useful to have a, a naked eye comet around, lots of uh, late nights and early mornings, but uh, now it's getting a bit higher and it's moving into the west. Um, but it is heading westward, as I say, into the sunset area, twilight area, and it's fading rapidly. Um, you can see here the, the daily progress of the comet um, through um, uh, top end of um, Virgo. Um, you can see that the tick distances each day is decreasing. This is rather like looking at a plane coming away from you, <laughs> effectively in perspective. You're seeing it, it receding from the Earth in perspective, and it will actually disappear, um, well, head off into this distance in, in, in this direction here. As I say, the problem is that that direction is, is actually setting earlier and earlier each evening. So in fact, from the UK, we'll probably lose the comet by around about the 20th of the month. So in perspective, this is when you plot the, uh, the altitude and azimuth of the comet uh, each evening at 11 o'clock. You see we start off in the north, uh, over here, northwest, and progressively over the course of time, it's heading further and further and getting lower and lower um, each, each, uh, each evening, as it were. And it's also fading. Uh, the, dis the magnitude is dropping quite rapidly. Um, in fact, it's probably losing half its brightness every week, I would think. Um, I did manage to get a few, few nice pictures. This one I took earlier on the uh, 18th of the month of, Ju of July, uh, early morning. You can see that the comet has a, a nice coma and quite a nice curving dust tail extending up here about five degrees. So if you get a chance to look at it first thing in the month, um, do have a go at it because it's binocular at the moment. It's only going to get worse and get fainter. Um, so get it early while you can. Again, we've come back to uh, the teapot and uh, Sagittarius again from last month. You can see this is repeated this month just for information. Um, some nice interesting objects to look at. Have you uh, look at the, the uh, star map here and find your way around some nice clusters in that uh, southern aspect at the moment. So do take the chance to look at those because it won't be around uh, very much longer because it is actually getting lower and lower in, as it sets into the west as, as we get into August and later. So one object to, uh, to tease you with this month is the dwarf planet series. And you'll see that um, it's actually quite low down. It's in uh, Aquarius really quite difficult to find but there is a newsletter we get that to hear it's newsletter 250 that tells you where to find it um, and it is binocular type telescopic object at 7.7 .7 magnitude um, if you want to track that one down it's a good challenge so looking at the uh, night sky in general um, constellations we're now familiar to us are, are cygnus lyra sagitta Alpecula, hercules and so on forming this part of the summer triangle as we've seen before and just pointing out there's a few objects obviously m57 ring nebula m56 uh, albario a nice double star at the end of the swan there the, the cygnus here um, quite a few nice clusters around um, into sagitta we've got m71 and, M, and the, dum the dumbbell nebula m27 um, we've also got calendar 399 you can just about see it on the screen here it looks like a reverse coat hanger it's like a j shape easily found in binoculars and it's quite an unusual asterism that's that's what it is really okay so so looking at the planetary information for the month um you can see that we have now um 
five com uh, five planets um, uh, available to us. We, we have Mars by late evening. We've already have Jupiter and Saturn, and we also now have Neptune and Uranus joining them as well. So, um, if you're a planetary observer, now is the time to get going on that one. I think um, they're all pretty low down uh, at the moment. Uh, Mars will become much better in the sky towards our position in in October. Oops, I've gone backwards on it. Sorry. Right, looking at Saturn, um, some nice spring features to look at if you can. Um, this, the ceiling effect is, is is now probably at an end uh, into August. Um, so. Um, back to normal appearance of, of the rings, uh, but uh, do have a look at Saturn while you can. It's quite difficult, it's low down, but telescopically it's always a nice thing to have a look at. And uh, yeah, so please have a look with, with the telescope on that one if you can. Going through the uh, months ahead, as it were, a full moon is the first week of the month, so it wipes out most everything um, in terms of moonlight, moonlight interfering. Mars is at uh, perihelion on the 3rd, so there's a possible start of dust storm season on Mars. So if, if you're a planetary observer, this is fingers crossed because uh, it's, it's really the Martian summer and um, that heralds the dust storm season. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see surface features by October um, because the uh, Start, dust storms can obscure those features, you know. Okay, so on the August 11th, we've got a, a, a channel transit of uh, uh, Callisto, um, an early evening, moderately early evening uh, 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 event. Uh, details on newsletter 248. Uh, last quarter is on the 11th, which is handy in, in some aspects because if you're looking at the Perseid meteor shower, you want the moon out the way. So have a look at the Perseid meteors. Uh, Around that time, 11th, 12th, 13th, but do it before moonrise if you can, because otherwise you get uh, a little bit of moonlight interfering. Or put yourself um, out, out of moonlight down the side of a building or a hedge or something uh, into darker areas where you can start to see the, uh, the pursued meteors. This year, the meteors stream is peaking around about two o'clock in the afternoon um, for us, so um, we have to get to see it before and after. So we get to see the, the, the rise in the activity uh, the morning before, um, and then also the, in the, the early morning, or the morning after, as it were, you know, in, on the 13th. Uh, okay, so Titan is an elongation on the 13th. So is Venus at great elongation in the dawn sky. If you haven't seen Venus yet, it's quite bright. It's very easy to see in dawn skies. I say comet uh, Neowise the 16th is very low in the west by about the 16th of the month. It gets difficult after that, so really do make an effort to see it before that date because uh, it gets really, really uh, difficult after that. Mercury at superior conjunction, so that's out of the way at the moment uh, on the 17th. If you are looking for new moon um, events, then there is a wafer thin, ultra thin um, uh, new moon on the, on the 19th. Do make sure the sun is set before you look for that. It's, it's a dangerous thing to do if you do you know, otherwise. Um, you've only got 40 minutes to do that. So, you know, it's a challenge, but please be careful. Next evening, obviously, is a bit better. We've got, we've got something like about 67 minutes to see a very thin crescent moon, 4%. Nice bit of earth shine to look at as well on there. So first, first course on the 25th. And as I say, um, Dwarf planet series uh, is uh, opposition on the 29th. Um, so do have a look at that if you have a telescope. So uh, the other thing to bear in mind is that the, um, the Watelucent cloud season is now coming to an end. It's only going to be around for the next few weeks, in early August. Um, if you're looking 90 minutes to 120 minutes after sunset or the same time before sunrise, if you see very high, uh, uh, Okay, very low level, uh, it's a very high level cloud, but it's low in the, in the uh, north uh, western aspect. Electric blue in colour. Um, I've never seen it myself, but if, you, if you're lucky to see it, then uh, have a look at that in the next couple of weeks. And as always, you know, cautionary warning that if you're looking at anywhere near the sun, make sure the sun is outside, you know, is set um, before you start to sweep with binoculars. Right, so that really comes to the end of our review for or August. Do have a look at one or two things. It's very nice things to look at. And we'll do it all again next month.